Ich will rennen machen. Ich will ein Tito Porzo Grutari machen. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most memorable and evocative speeches from the world of Westeros. We'll be including monologues from both Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon. Warning, expect some spoilers ahead. Through them, you imagine you cheat the great darkness of its victory. Number 10. I will be your champion, Oberyn Martell. Pedro Pascal was only in seven episodes of Game of Thrones, but that was more than enough to turn him into a fan favorite. His character Oberyn Martell arrived in King's Landing seeking revenge for his murdered sister and her children. Sadly, things didn't quite go to plan. In this atmospheric scene, the mysterious prince visits Tyrion in his prison cell. He tells the story of a childhood meeting with the Lannister children, revealing his sense of compassion. That's not a monster, I told Cersei. That's just a baby. Oberyn's true motivations become clear, and he concludes with an offer to fight for Tyrion in the upcoming trial by combat. I will be your champion. It is superbly acted by both Pascal and Peter Dinklage. And what about what I want? Justice. Number 9. Love is a Downfall, Laris Strong. House of the Dragon may just be warming up when it comes to monologues, but thanks to the Shakespearean level villainy of Lord Laris, we already have a strong contender. What are children but a weakness? After murdering his own brother for the good of Team Green, the future master of Whisperers warns Queen Alicent of the pitfalls that come with children and familial love. Love. Is a downfall. The sentiments are bleak, but it's some of the strongest writing of the series so far. Matthew Needham's delivery is chilling, and leaves us in no doubt of the lengths his character will go to advance his own self-interest. I feel certain you will reward me when the time is right. Number 8. First Kill – Robert Baratheon Like Oberyn, Robert Baratheon didn't last long, but during his short tenure on the show, he made a big impression. Robert may have liked wine a bit too much and been a bad king, but he wasn't a fool. Five. One. One army, a real army, united behind one leader with one purpose. The writing in season one allows the audience a glimpse of the former soldier who was once Ned Stark's closest friend. In this scene, the king talks war stories with Barristan Selmy and Jaime Lannister. Caved in his breastplate. Probably shattered every rib he had. Mark Addy takes us to the battlefields of their youth, holding us captive with a riveting speech about the first time his character killed a man. Right before I brought it down, he shouted, Wait! Wait! Number 7. Battle of the Blackwater – Tyrion Lannister Every fantasy film or show needs some rousing battle speeches, and Game of Thrones has its fair share. In the battle against the Wildlings, Sir Alistair Thorne gives the Night's Watch a strong incentive for holding Castle Black. Theon's speech to the Iron Islanders is the highlight of his time in command. But our war cries will echo through eternity! However, it's Tyrion's speech during the Battle of Blackwater Bay that really stands out. He may not be a soldier, but he knows how to play to a crowd. Don't fight for your king! And don't fight for his kingdoms! Instead of honor and glory, he focuses on the things that really matter to his men. By the time he's finished, we're all ready to follow him into battle. There's our brave men knocking at our door! Let's go kill them! Number 6. Last Supper – Viserys I Targaryen George R. R. Martin praised actor Paddy Considine for the portrayal of King Viserys, which the author felt was an improvement on his character in the book. When Viserys makes this speech during his final meal, it's easy to understand the hype. It both gladdens my heart and fills me with sorrow. In a rare moment of peace between the warring sections of the family, the king has all his loved ones gathered together. He makes a toast, expressing his love for the people around the table and his hopes that they will reconcile their differences. Let us no longer hold your feelings in our hearts. It's touching, but also tragic. 
we know his wishes are futile, and his death will soon divide the family forever. If not for the sake of the crown, and for the sake of this old man. Number five, Breaker of Chains, Daenerys Targaryen. It's hard to remember a time before Daenerys Stormborn walked into the fire and emerged as the Mother of Dragons. With each season, her power grew, and each new stage was marked with a speech. But if you stay, it will be as brothers and sisters, as husbands and wives. The address to the Unsullied at Astapor is still one of our favorites. But by the time Danny reached Marine, she had fine-tuned her powers of rhetoric. Here, she speaks directly to the city slaves in a speech that aims to convince them that she delivers on her promises. As proof, she catapults the broken collars of the freed slaves of Astapor and Yunkai into the city. It's a good pitch, delivered with flair. Number four, tell Cersei I want her to know it was me, Olena Tyrell. Olena Tyrell may be a wise old woman, but she is not made in the traditional mold. With her barbed tongue and sharp wit, every scene with her is a joy. Put the pen down, dear. We both know you're not writing anything. It was hard to say goodbye to the Queen of Thorns, but she went out on a high, dropping a bombshell on Jaime Lannister in a spine-tingling final speech. A shocking scene. Not at all what I intended. When the Lannister forces march into Highgarden, Jamie generously offers the Tyrell matriarch a quick death by poison. She makes her last confession with more relish than remorse. Diana Riggs' delivery of that final barb is truly iconic. Tell Sassy, I wanted to know it was me. Number three, Chaos is a Ladder, Peter Baelish. I did what I did for the good of the realm. The realm? Do you know what the realm is? From the very beginning, Littlefinger was a major player in the Game of Thrones. This speech to Varys in season three sums up his life philosophy. When Aidan Gillen says that famous line, we get chills every time. Chaos isn't a pit. Chaos is a ladder. In the early days, it was easy to view Lords Varys and Baelish as two sides of the same coin, but this scene highlights their differences. Varys's priority is the realm, while Littlefinger always puts himself and his ambition first. The reveal of the murdered Roz, like the betrayal of Ned Stark before it, reminds us of the lengths Littlefinger will go to advance his own cause and thwart those who stand in his way. The climb is all there is. Number two, Kingslayer, Jaime Lannister. You probably remember this scene as the one with Jaime and Brienne in the bath, but although it is long and complex, the writers didn't need any sex position to make us pay attention. I urged him to surrender peacefully, but the king didn't listen to me. Over the course of a five-minute monologue, Jaime Lannister transformed from one of the series' most hated villains into a misunderstood anti-hero with a devastating backstory. The writing is impeccable, and Nikolai Coster Waldau's acting is to be applauded. Would you have done it? Would you have kept your oath then? As Jamie finally opens up to share the events that have haunted him throughout his adult life, he radiates anger and bitterness. However, it's his vulnerability that gives the scene its emotional weight. By what right does the wolf judge the lion? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Confession – Tyrion Lannister Peter Dinklage won four well-deserved Emmys for his work on Game of Thrones, and we could include many of his scenes and speeches here. But there's one moment that seems to say more about his character than any other. I saved this city and all your worthless lives. Brought before his cold-hearted father and on trial for his life, Tyrion's usual veneer of wit and diplomacy lifts. Beneath it, we see a man who is vulnerable, furious, and brutally honest. I wish 
I was the monster you think I am. I wish I had enough poison for the whole pack of you. I would gladly give my life to watch you all swallow it. His anger is mostly for Tywin, but also for every person who has ever failed to give him the respect he deserves, simply because of his dwarfism. It's a speech delivered with real venom, and it's immensely satisfying to watch, but it's heartbreaking too. I'm guilty of being a dwarf. You are not on trial for being a dwarf. Oh, yes I am. I've been on trial for that my entire life. Which Game of Thrones speech made the biggest impression on you? Share your favorites in the comments. It was a good speech. Didn't want to interrupt. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.